another cute little item from the garage sale. This, this thing cost me five bucks, I think. Uh, a little portable mini oscilloscope. Missing a cover at the back. Strange little controls with metal knobs. Now it's got yeah, five bucks. Um, it's got no markings on it, so I couldn't look it up. I did try putting the search term vintage mini oscilloscope in Google and didn't get anything. But then I tried putting that same search term in YouTube and there it was, one of these things. Someone had made a, just a very short video on it. Um, and all they were doing basically was aimlessly twiddling all these knobs. And the screen was changing a little bit, but I don't think they had anything, any input connected. Uh, but that video was useful because it did have what this thing is in the title, which and it's a Cossor 1039M oscillograph. And the reason I couldn't find anything on that is because the back cover is where the manufacturing and model details would be, and it's missing that. It's also missing a little cap that sits over the CRT to protect it. But it does have the non-earthed plug, power plug. Uh, I don't know how safe it is to run it without that. Probably, uh, well I've got to put it back on it anyway. To sit against that, I'll just put a bit of aluminium plate I think. Sit against that and bolt onto here so that this doesn't come out. And maybe an IEC connector for power with an earth. Anyway, let's have a look inside of it. And it's actually quite gorgeous. It's very nicely made. All valves, no semiconductors at all. Even the valves have got little spring-loaded retaining bar. It's got CRT, of course. Three identical valves, 6AM8s, and another valve down here, which is a ST61, I think it was, and it's a signal diode. This is a Mark I version of this thing, and the later, there's a Mark II version, where I know that that's been replaced with a germanium diode. It's also got a metal rectifier, or selenium, I presume. I don't know how well those things last, but there's a lot of paper and electrolytic capacitors in it, so getting this thing going probably means a big recapping job. But it looks like it wouldn't be too hard to get at it, providing I'm screwing this, lets this fall away so I can get at those caps easily. But yeah, another little fun project for a rainy day. And this is the back cover that has all the identifying information but which I didn't have, which was why I had trouble finding out what this thing was in the first place. I even found an ad for the little beastie. Bandwidth goes from 25 hertz to about 120. Um, I believe these were made in circa 1952. And back in those days, look at that, 29 pounds 10, which um, back in 1952 was a hell of a lot of money. I mean, that would have been a few weeks wages for, for most people but uh, I got it for five bucks <laughs> and I'll also be putting links to service manual for this model and I found one for the later model which is the one that eliminates this other diode down here I'll put them links to those down in the doobly-doo hope you liked it uh, if you did and you want to see the follow-up when, when I finally get around to it uh, please like and subscribe and Catch you later.